Howdy folks! In the last video, we went over the basics of Mongoose. How to install it, how to connect it, how to hook it up to Express, and how to create a basic schema. In this video, we're going to be using that schema to hook up and do some creation and fetching with our existing user APIs. Let's get started. So, now let's take a look at how to actually utilize it. Let's start off with our route. We've got a user route here with username, password, and email, but we're not really doing anything with it, right? So let's take a look at how we would actually make use of this. First of all, I'm going to import my user model. Yeah, I'll just call it user. Require. Let's go up a directory into models and then user model. Now, Mongoose does have the same callback ability that Mongo has. So we're going to start off with that, but bear in mind you can also do a promise-based system with it. So both are available. So to insert, we're going to call user.create. And this then takes in an object to create, and as a second parameter, a callback. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to actually put our data into it. So username, password, and email. The next thing we want to do is fill out our callback. And the callback is what's going to be called once Mongo actually properly inserts that data. The callback takes two parameters, an error and a result. If there is an error, we basically want to return a 500 res.status 500.end error. That's going to send that error up, and which is not what you'd normally do in production, but we're just testing right now, so that's okay. We probably want to console.log it also. Error posting user. Error. Just so we don't lose it. Otherwise, if there is no error, our result is going to be the data of the user that we just created. So we're going to say res.json result. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to kill our server. We're going to restart it. Wait for it to come up. There we go. And then let's open up Postman. I already have create user set up here to go to that specific port, that API. And I've got my username, password, and email. So let's click send. Could not get response. Oh no, something died. Model create no longer accepts a callback. So in this version of Mongoose that I have, version seven, I cannot do a callback anymore. So if you run into this, then what I have to do here, whoops, is rather than this callback, I actually have to await this or do use a dot then. So let's put a dot then in here. I think that should be okay. Yeah. So if we were going to do an error, then we would want a dot catch. So let's actually take this out and let's do a dot catch error. And then let's console log and do our status. There we go. So there we go. Now it's promisified. You could also use async await on this. That might be uh a nicer way of doing it. So let's start that server up again. And let's run it. And there we go. We have a username, a password, the ID, and a V. So what is V? V is basically the version number of the schema. So this is schema version zero. If we create another version and update that version, it'll update that to one. And that kind of helps both you and Mongoose determine if the data in the database is using an outdated version, which can be helpful in some cases. So let's take a look also at Compass. So I'm going to boot up Compass now and take a look at the database. So here we are in Compass, and you can see my user database has been created. I'm going to open that up. Users collection, which is what Mongoose created, and thank you. Now we've got our same ID, username, password version. Something to keep in mind now. 
I also gave it, oops, that's the wrong one, an email. That email did not make it into the database. That is because email is not part of the schema I created. Mongoose didn't crash. It didn't say, hey, I don't know what this key is. It just ignored it. It said, that's data that's not part of my schema. So if you want email, you have to put email into your schema. It's a little strict like that. Cool. So now we've got our creation. The next step is let's do get by ID. We've got our ID and this is going to be fairly simple. User.find1 and then our query inside here. We've got an ID. Our Mongo table has underscore ID. ID. That's not going to work though. Remember, in Mongoose, the ID is an object ID. It's not a string. So we actually have to wrap this. So first, we're going to pull in object ID from MongoDB, which remember, we have installed because we installed Mongoose. Then we're going to wrap this as an object ID, just like that. And we're going to use the same dot then result and we're going to return that res.json result. I'm not going to put the catch on this one. I'm going to get rid of this console log. I'm not going to put the catch on this one because it's basically the same as this one and I'll leave that up to you as the reader. So let's restart our server. Let's grab our ID from our post call, go into get user, paste it in there and run. Well, that gave us an error. Class constructor object ID cannot be invoked without new. That's an easy enough fix. We'll just put a new in there. Save that. Kill our server with control C. Rerun it. Let's try that again. There we go. And there's our data. ID, username, password, V. Normally you wouldn't actually send your password back but that's okay for now. All right, very last one, get slash. So this is get all, we're getting all the users. In this case, we can just call user.find. Normally, we would have a where clause and have some data. In this case, we just wanna find everything. So we're not gonna have any where clause because we just want all the users. If you wanted to find a user specifically like multiple users with a certain name, etc. That's where you put that in there. The only difference between these two is find one returns a single object and find returns an array. I'm just going to copy this same then because it's basically going to be the same thing. Let's save that. Let's run it. All right. And now let's go to get all users here. Run that. And there we go. You can see this is now an array containing that user. So let's go over this again really quickly. We got our post route, which calls user create. So creation is the insert. This is a promisified one. If you have an older version of Mongoose, you can also use callbacks. Find one takes in a filter and finds one single object, probably the first object that matches that filter, or it returns null. Find returns all matching items, so it'll return an array. So, this has been Mongoose, Setup, Creation, and Fetching. Next time, we'll go over how to update and delete items. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.